Beloved of God, good morning to you on this beautiful World Communion Sunday. And today we are a community of Christ communing with each other, and we're so glad to be communing with you. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we're curious about where you're seeing the wisdom of God pop up in your life. No matter who you love, we see the light of Christ in you. No matter whether you are male or female or anywhere else, else on the beautiful gender spectrum that God created. We see the light of Christ in you. Note whether you are black or white or brown or any other color of the beautiful rainbow, we see the light of Christ in you. Whether you have a million dollars or two pennies to your pocket, we see the light of Christ in you. If you have a million dollars, we might ask for a little bit more of the light of Christ to support the life and ministry of this church, but we see it in you. No matter your country of origin, whether you arrived here on foot, whether you got here yesterday, whether you have been in this country for centuries since time immemorial, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we see the light of Christ in you and we welcome you. And anyone who tells you otherwise, anyone who tells you that you are not somehow not beloved of God, uh, no matter who you are and where you are in life's journey, is telling you fake news about Jesus. And so welcome to a time where we get to hear the good news this morning, because that's who you are to us, and that's who we want to be to you. Just a quick announcement this morning. I wanted to let uh, you know and the community know that we're going to be offering some new worship opportunities. And before, before I share what we're going to be offering, I want to let everybody know that we respect your, your decision. We recognize that people are of many different comfort levels and are going to make very different choices. And whatever you feel comfortable doing or not comfortable doing, we support you in setting your own boundaries. And uh, I want to acknowledge that there are many of us uh, who are yearning for an embodied worship experience, an in-person in worship experience, and to provide an opportunity that is safe and in line with COVID regulations, we are going to start offering Saturday morning services following the filming of this service at 11 o'clock on Saturday mornings. These gatherings will be capped at 25 people. We will mark out spaces in the pews that are six feet apart. So we have an, the ability to practice physical distancing. A mask will be required and we will need people 
to RSVP during the week to let us know that they will be coming to Saturday morning services. And there will also be a greeter at the door welcoming people and helping people gather in a way that is in keeping with our protocols, which we will be making available to the congregation in the announcements this week. And we are working to make sure that we are abiding by the safest regulations in keeping with state guidelines for in-person gatherings. This will be a great opportunity for us to maintain our sense of community togetherness in these times. It will also be a very simple service. It won't be as elaborate as what we offer on Sunday morning in the online link, which will continue to be made available to everybody. But this will be a time to have scripture, a scripture response, prayer time together. We will also have a brief communion because that's something we can do together that's embodied. So please bring your own bread and grape juice. So we all get to bring juice boxes to church and also a little snack, and that will be our communion together. Following worship, in lieu of coffee or fellowship hour, we will have an opportunity to make prayer flags for our neighbors. We've been making prayer flags for people who are shut in. We've been making prayer flags for the church property and the grounds around our building to decorate the town with the color and beauty of our prayers. We've also made prayer flags of gratitude for the firefighters. And this is a great way for us to extend our love and care to one another in this time and to let our prayers and our life together be seen and felt by each other and by the community. So uh, that will be something we can do during fellowship following worship. But these worship services won't be longer than a half an hour and it will just be an opportunity for us to maintain our sense of togetherness. So I, uh, for all, to all of you who will, who feel that will be meaningful, you are, you are welcome. We come into the presence of God at this time with our prayer for peace and the lighting of our peace candle. Great spirit of life, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts our world, our universe. Amen. Jesus' teaching this morning, uh, we are invited to not worry and to dwell in the present moment. It's also World Communion Sunday, and typically on Communion Sundays, we have a prayer of confession or a prayer of beginning anew. So I wanted to offer us this simple uh, me prayer or meditation that we can do together this morning as a prayer of beginning anew as a prayer of centering ourselves in the present moment and in God's presence. 
So Jesus says, do not worry. I want you to think of whatever it is that might be too heavy for you to carry. Whatever pain or stress or anxiety or fear you might have, it could be anything, or something that you wish would be lifted from off your shoulders. Whatever it is, allow it to be in your hands right now. Place your hands on your knees. You can sit upright a little bit. And now I invite you to hold on to it. Hold on to that, whatever your burden might be. Hold on to it as tightly as you can. Harder. Harder. You don't want to let this burden go. Now hold on to it even more tightly. Now all at once let it go and breathe out. Now breathe in the breath of life and breathe out the breath of life, which is another name for the Holy Spirit. And release that burden into the hands of God, into the light and spaciousness of God's presence all around you. Breathe in, arriving in God's presence, and breathe out that burden lifted off of you in God's presence. Take another deep breath in and another deep breath out. Now just sit there with your breathing, with that breath of life, and as you sit with your hands still open, I want you to close your eyes. I invite you to close your eyes and take three deep breaths and imagine God placing into your hands whatever it is that you need to meet the challenges of this day, or maybe you don't need anything in particular. Maybe God is just placing light in your hands, love in your hands. Whatever you need in this moment, receive it from God in your hands. Breathe in. And breathe out. Beloved of God, today we have an opportunity to begin anew. We are all just humans doing the best that we can. And yet each, every moment we have new opportunities to grow in the light of Christ. And so in joy and gratitude for that, let us pray. Our Creator, our Father, great Mother in whom is heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy realm come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. 
Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is sown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. So in today's scripture reading, Jesus talks to us about mindfulness. Uh, he talks about shining the light of awareness on the simple beauties and the simple blessings of every day. He talks, he invites us to consider the lilies. And so today I wanted to begin the reflection time with just considering the hydrangeas that Pamela Jean gave to us. So blue, so beautiful. And this practice that he invites us to do is about shining the light of our awareness on things, on simple things, on the present moment. And so before we hear the reflection, I invite us to shine the light of awareness. We're reading, uh, shine the light of our awareness on this moment that we're sharing together. And so I invite you to sit comfortably and again, pay attention to your breathing. This practice comes from Thich Nhat Hanh. We're reading a book together in our religious study group called Living Buddha, Living Christ. And we're learning about how mindfulness can be like a prayer, shining the light of our awareness on our experience in the present moment can be like a prayer. And certainly this is how Jesus teaches us to pray in today's scripture reading when he invites us to consider the lilies. So, this is a very simple meditation practice. Breathing in, I am aware of the flowers. Breathing out, I smile for the flowers. Breathing in, I am aware of my breath. Breathing in, I smile to my breath. Breathing in, I am aware of my heart. Breathing out, I relax my heart and smile to my heart. Breathing in, I am aware I am surrounded by God's love and by community. Breathing out, I smile to the presence of God and to community. And so we can practice showing up to life like that with our whole being in every moment. Today, Jesus invites us to allow our chaos to be interrupted by the song of the lilies. The busyness, the ugliness is to be interrupted. Our general state of shock from the constant vulgarity. We are going to pause from this. 
We are going to take a moment to slow down from our reeling in a constant trauma response to the spin cycle of hate that's been thrust upon us as normalcy and presented as normalcy. We are going to take care of our nervous system this morning and take a moment to be still. We're going to take Jesus's advice and for a moment, for an hour together, prioritize considering the beauty and indeed the wisdom of the lilies, or as we did, the hydrangea of, of being itself. In the reckless consuming busyness of our man-made noise, Jesus invites us to pause and never forget to contemplate beauty, to allow our minds to be still long enough to rest in the spaciousness of being, to allow our minds to be still long enough to, for our awareness to grow and expand and, and appreciate life itself to make ourselves open and available to life itself, to God. Do not worry, he tells us, be right here, right now. God's there. Rest in beauty now, don't wait for tomorrow. See the beauty of life in the realm of God, in the here, in the now, in simple things like birds and flowers, he tells us. Consider the lilies, a simple in invitation, but a profound task and a tall order in today's world. When Jesus says, consider the lilies, he is not telling us to be careless. Coupled with his urging us to seek first the kingdom of heaven, he is giving us a way by considering the lilies. He's giving us a way to be victorious in such a pursuit. Seek liberation and justice and peace for your neighbors in this world right now, he is telling us. Don't wait for it, despite what the, what the world looks like or despite what the world tells you is possible or not possible. Put that hope for the realm of God before everything else. We are to place that hope before all else. We are to put working for a just world for all before all other desires, he tells us. And if we do, when we do that, we will be cared for. But also in telling us again and again not to worry by reminding us that we don't need to worry, he also reminds us that this, this long journey we make together to the realm of God begins in this moment, this moment that I'm speaking to you right here, right now, with every breath we take. We practice arriving there now, in each moment, allowing ourselves to not worry and allowing ourselves to, to dwell fully in the present moment, fully aware, fully present and appreciative of life, fearless and free like a bird of the air or a flower in the field. This way of, of being, Jesus says to us, is our birthright. And it's, it's how we meet God in the present moment. In this teaching of not worrying and dwelling fully in the present moment, Jesus puts a bouquet of flowers before us to remind us of how we can see the universe in a dewdrop. We don't need to place our hope in the future. We can root ourselves in the hope of the present. We can see the word of God illustrated on something as simple as the beauty of a flower. He rem reminds us that if God so cares for the lilies, how much more does God, God care for each and every one of us? When he lifts up this field of lilies to us, he compares us to them, to their beauty. What deep love that, that is. He reminds us that in God's eyes, we are like a field of lilies, just as we are. I want us to hear that this morning. Please let's take that line of the gospel completely literally. Would we, if, we, if, if, mo, if more Christians took that line literally, would we not treat one another as, as lilies, 
as beautiful, as beloved. Do not worry, consider the lilies. Let us have a sense of urgency about that teaching and rush to grasp the beauty and immense preciousness of this moment and every moment of our lives while we have it, while we have that moment. Jesus shows to us how our journey to the realm of God begins with our allowing ourselves to receive the love that sees us as beautiful as flowers, just as we are, nothing more, nothing less. We know this because if we take Jesus seriously and consider the, the lilies of the field as we uh, listen for their wisdom, if we ask a lily to tell us its wisdom, we will hear it. The poet P P Peter Schumann writes of the wisdom of lilies, saying, please pay attention to the lilies. Population of lilies, unhoused, unsalaried, sitting in no office, driving to no market, famous for beauty and self-sufficiency, visited by clouds and bumblebees, unimpressed by all loud things, yet arresting everybody's attention by doing nothing. Standing tall, lean, and sumptuous without any arrogance. And Jesus tells us we are God's lilies like that. Right here in this moment without adding or subtracting anything to ourselves. We, uh, we are as complete in our simplicity and in our being as the lilies. A lily doesn't worry. They reach toward the light and sink their roots deep in the soil and grow and show their beauty and give themselves to the larger life cycle from which they arose. Jesus tells us we can be like the lilies. We don't have to worry. In every moment, our soul, our heart, our mind can rest rooted in the beauty of life in this moment, in the mystery of life in this moment. We can live letting our hearts and our souls reach for the greatest, reaching for the greatest beauty that we can imagine. In this very moment, we can reach for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. In this moment, in the flowers and birds and in our hearts and allow that beauty to dwell in us just as we are. We're enough. We can't buy it or sell it. We can only allow ourselves to dwell there, to arrive there, to grow there. God's lilies invite us to practice mindfully dwelling fully in each moment, embracing the fullness of life today, even in the face of an uncertain tomorrow. This practice of not waiting for tomorrow to seek beauty and possibility, but finding it now is not idealistic or naive. It's our urgent responsibility. Jesus told his followers to consider the lilies and to not worry against a backdrop of violence, poverty, oppression, and death. In that social context, he held his friends together and said, you are beautiful in God's eyes, just as you are. In that context, he told them they were worthy of wholeness. In that context, he encouraged them to seek and declare justice and peace and liberation and truth with their whole bodies, with their whole being, and practice arriving in the realm of God in the present moment, far from being naive. In this world where we are constantly pushed into the future and told we aren't enough, dwelling fully in the present moment and living like one of God's lilies, that becomes an act of resistance. Consider the lilies, Jesus says to us. Do not worry. Strive for the realm of God. Don't worry about tomorrow. We only have today. We only have this precious moment packed with so much life and potential. If we look deeply at the present moment, we realize it contains the past and the future. Thich Nhat Hanh, who I mentioned earlier, the great teacher of mindfulness, talks about in his book, Living Buddha, Living Christ, how, a faith, com how faith communities are really communities of resistance because we are rooting in the compassion the world hasn't 
lived into yet. He also explains how God's presence and the kingdom of God are touched and experienced in the present moment when we practice arriving deeply with each breath, each footstep, every look, every smile. When we look deeply at every simple treasure, every flower, we welcome the realm of God and we prepare for its flourishing when we open ourselves to life in that way. We welcome the realm of God by letting our hearts crack open more, our souls and our minds open more, our awareness to deepen and expand more to the life that's always available to us. Jesus gives us permission to rest in and reach for the beauty of life within us and around us that's always available to us and become the root. That practice becomes the root of all transformation, all understanding, all resistance. When we allow ourselves to dwell deeply in the life available to us right now, we rest in God's presence the way a lily grows in soil and light. The simple beauty, wisdom, and love of God shines through our being. The compassion, that ever-present compassion that's there, appears by itself when we show up for it. Even in the face of chaos and uncertainty and calamity, we discover we have the ability to continue striving to continue putting our roots down. We have the ability to continue reaching toward that greater light, blossoming and flourishing in all the simple ways we are able, showing our beauty just as we are, as God's lilies. Even when ignorance and vulgarity, noise and stupid waste are shoved into our faces, we can defiantly focus on the beauty of God's lilies blossoming all over above and through the wreckage of empire and count ourselves among those beautiful lilies. We can see the eternal beauty and wisdom and life of God's lilies. So let your embrace of beauty in this moment and your relishing in the simple beauty of life in this very moment be the ground of your being and the base of your resistance which is our striving for the kingdom of God and your heart's longing for grace. Let your putting your roots down in the present moment be the beginning of your journey to the realm of God. Let your blossoming into the fullest and most beautiful expression of your heart's longing for grace be your journey and, and the journey you welcome others onto. Grow fully and freely and beautifully like the lilies that resist simply by being what God made them to be. We don't have enough time to worry. We don't have enough time to worry. We have to spend every moment breathing deeply into life and declaring its beauty in everything that we do. And we can't do that tomorrow. We can't do that yesterday. We can only do that now. We don't have time to worry. We only have time to be God's lilies. So go and blossom. Amen. Welcome to this table where all people and all beings were welcomed to gather at since the beginning of time. God, you never promised us that we would, that the way would be clear. You have, however, created us in your image, the image of one who is wisdom, one who is love, who is courage. You breathed your life into us with the assurance that we have within and around us everything we need to be your faithful people. Though we sometimes act in disregard for your call on our collective life, still you show up with 
and for us relentlessly. And so we join with all the saints who have gone before in gratitude for your abiding presence. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power and presence, all that is is full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of love. Sacred is your presence and blessed is the Christ with us. Through the life of Jesus, we see an example of what it means to navigate an uncertain path, practice creative ministry, and face with courage and compassion all the barriers that work against your spirit on the move. Jesus lived and breathed a ministry rooted in your love for all people and all life. He prioritized the lives of those who are suffering and showed us what it looks like to be with and for one another even under great distress. Though evil attempted to silence his proclamation of an all-inclusive kingdom of God, not even death could keep love from growing. On the night in which he was arrested, he gathered with his friends for a meal, and he took bread and gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and he shared it with his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take this cup, this cup is my blood poured out for you the new and everlasting covenant for the, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink from it, as often as you gather, drink this cup and remember me. And so in remembrance of Christ with us and in the assurance of your love persistent, we offer our lives, our ministry, and our church in the service of your healing work as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ is coming again. Pour out your spirit on this community and on these gifts. Make them a taste of your kingdom through Christ with us, that we might leave the table both nourished by your love and still hungry for justice for all of your people. And so, dear community, dear friends, beloved of God, take this bread and let us eat together. And now I invite you to take this cup and let us drink together. Eternal God of life and beauty, we give you thanks for making us one with Christ through this meal. Send us out on fire with your love, with your spirit. Help us to bring this beauty to the world as your hands, your feet, your heart of compassion. Amen. In gratitude for the great life of God all around us, beloved, the beloved community all around us, the gifts of the Spirit, and the beauty of the lilies, we now offer forth our gifts and offerings to support the flourishing of all that life that has been given to us. The morning offering will now be collected and received. I invite you to fill out a check and send it to the church, or you can make your online giving. However, however you are making your offering to the church, I invite you to do that at this time to support the life and ministry of this beloved community, of this church.
giver of life, beloved Christ, and Holy Spirit, we ask that you send your blessings down on these gifts and shower your blessings down on each and every one of us. Make us your gifts to the world. And we ask that you use all that we have and all that we are in your service. Amen. Go out as God's lilies, go out as God's roses, as God's hydrangea bushes and lilacs and buttercups and dandelions. Go out with the blessing of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And may you love God so much you love nothing else too much. And may you fear God just enough you need fear nothing else at all. Beloved of God, go and in love. Amen. Thank you. Oh,